It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. We have on the line one of the most conservative state representatives in office today. His name, Josh Miller. He represents District 66. That's Heber Springs, among other places. Hey, Josh, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well, Paul. Thanks for having me on. How are you? I'm doing really well, too. I'm doing very well, too. Hey, congratulations, by the way, on getting uh, that op-ed published over at foxnews.com. I thought it was really, really well done, and it illustrated that our priorities are completely out of whack. Well, thank you for that. Those uh, th- those guys did a great job on that. And, and it is true. It's just it's absolutely sickening to me. Uh, to see what we've done, and to, and when you when you do the research and discover that in our country, in Obamacare, Medicaid expansion state, uh, nearly twenty two thousand truly vulnerable folks have died while waiting on on Medicaid services, and and man, when you stop and think about that, it'll just uh, it'll just make you mad. Yeah, because you have uh, a lot of people believe that welfare is is there for those who truly need it, who truly can't take care of themselves, uh, and that they should be first in line. But instead, we have people who are able to work, choosing not to, who are young, who are a healthy population, and they're getting uh, basically a program in Arkansas that's worth $2 billion a year. And out of that $2 billion a year, we can't help those on a waiting list that need care actually need care to stay alive you're you're absolutely right i had a uh on facebook oh, a few days ago uh, a state senator here in our state uh took me to task a little bit and said well i, I failed to mention uh all that governor hutchison has done for the waiting list and so i'll go back and give him credit he uh he did kind of uh work work out the deal to move the 8.5 million dollars from the uh, uh tobacco settlement fund over there to, to go towards the waiting list folks now you know here's my deal and i said this on on uh, facebook when i was kind of arguing my point is that we're going to move we're going to move 8.5 million dollars to help our, our really most vulnerable our our most needy population yet we're going to spend an additional 133 million in this year's budget on uh to buy insurance uh for for able-bodied working age adults yeah and you know it's a joke it's an absolute joke paul you can't reconcile those two you can't reconcile the increase uh the, the the priorities there are still out of whack so you you know and so yeah they they did uh successfully uh, uh, try to take care of some of the people on this waiting list. Uh, they did do that, but why not all of them? Why not all of them? Well, it's because we are uh, w- because we'd rather give money to make Blue Cross and Blue Shield rich than we would right. to help those that truly need the help. Well, you you are absolutely right, and I'm telling you, folks. I mean, if if, if anybody if anybody cares at all what 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 uh what this redneck state representative has to say i am begging folks to please go vote for jan morgan uh, if you live in senate district five go vote for brian king we've got to have some folks down there who see this the way that you and i do in the way that you're talking here with our priorities are so out of whack it is unbelievable and until we i mean a lot can be accomplished when you set your priorities in in the correct order yeah uh, and, and and it's just really sad to see where we've gotten and uh i don't know i i'm, I'm just I, i'm it's an issue i'm not going to let go because uh we're, we we gave an additional 8.5 billion and want to pat ourselves on the back and talk about how wonderful we are and look at all we've done uh and yet we give an additional 133 billion to the insurance companies, and then we tell 3,000 folks um, who have developmental disabilities and, and all this other stuff that, hey, we uh, we run out of money and we can't help you. It's almost as if it's, the, it's, it's almost it's as if Josh, that 8.5 million dollars was there just to say that we did something. 
but we're not actually fixing the problem. But 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 it was it was uh, it was coming to a boil. More and more people were finding out there are people dying on this waiting list while we're giving away you know money to insurance companies and uh, to, to to help the able to able to work. Um, and, and in some cases, they don't even go to the doctor. And so that money, in my opinion, right. if we're talking about a welfare program, is now wasted just to give an in, make an insurance company rich. And so it's like, okay, well, uh, we got to do something because, yeah, we do look like giant uh, hypocrites. And, you know, that's the only thing that these leftist Republicans, when you when you put the pain point politics on them, when you actually do, you know, the left is really good at, at making victims out of people. But when you have actu- right. when you have actual victims, we're, we're not as uh, we're not as eager to actually try to help those that really need the help. You, you could be, you could be more right. I mean, it's it, the, the research in that article just is, is really mind blowing. When you, when you stop and think all across the country, how many folks, uh, have, have gotten the, basically the free insurance or whatever. And then as opposed to how many folks in these same states, uh, are still on, on develop the, the DD waiting list with the developmental disabilities. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not just to, so everybody has a clear picture. Um, you know, I, I'm a quadriplegic from a, a, a spinal cord injury and I look like an Olympic athlete compared to some of these folks on this waiting list. Hmm. Uh, that is just how bad a shape they're in. And, and we, and, and yet we tell them, Hey, you've still got to wait. Now, if they were able bodied and wanted free insurance and weren't working, buddy, we'd get them signed up in a heartbeat. Wow. Um, and, and if that, you know, I haven't met a, a, a taxpayer yet, Republican or Democrat or whatever, that doesn't look at the folks that are on the developmentally disabled waiting list and say, you know what? That's what my tax dollars are supposed to go to. Hmm. right there uh, I don't mind I don't mind helping these folks I don't mind giving them a hand up uh, you know and you know now we conservatives are sick and tired of seeing ours go to uh, you know we, we're, we're like the old sign that says I don't I, I don't oppose helping the the needy but I do oppose funding the lazy Wow and that's where we're at yeah the the illustration you just gave there it's just it is it is uh, it's an embarrassment um it, to, to, to think to, to look at somebody who is developmentally disabled and to tell them I mean, can you imagine if you told them that well if you could just get better and uh you know be able to take care of yourself we'd give you free insurance i mean that is that is cra- that is uh that is uh wrong i mean that is that is absolutely well, it, morally wrong it, it's, it's the truth. I mean, we, we, we tell these folks, uh, oh, man, we're sorry. We're just out of money. We can't, you know, we can't do any more for you. Um, and then, and then again, we take every, every stinking person right now that's able-bodied and, and unemployed and wants free insurance, uh, we just slobbered all over ourselves to get them signed up. Really, and, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't think history is going to be kind to this entire program. I think there will come a day when the people of Arkansas recognize that this entire thing was the biggest scam to make insurance companies and hospitals uh, actually very, very wealthy. I think it's all going to come out eventually. It will be common knowledge at some point. History is not going to be kind uh, to the people who perpetuated this scam and fraud on the people of Arkansas. We're talking with State Representative Josh Miller. Now, on that subject, Josh, you did bring up Brian King and you brought up Jan Morgan. I'm glad you did. But with Senator King, he seems to be always at the forefront here of predicting uh, what they're going to do next or predicting the problem. And then, of course, the leadership, you know, they use their carefully crafted language and they always figure out a way to, you know, keep the gravy train going and protect those. But we've seen some cracks in their armor. You know, we, we've seen some of these guys, uh, for example, if you look at, uh, you know, what with what John Woods was doing with uh, with these health care ent- entities, you look at preferred family health care, you look at Hank Wilkins, you look at Eddie Cooper, you look at Rusty Cranford, you look at these lobbyists, and it does seem to be 
that there's a reason they didn't want to pass Brian King's Medicaid disclosure bill. And it's because there's a lot of people down there, it appears, that are getting money, extra money, from uh, these uh, health, this healthcare industry. What are your thoughts on all of that? Well, you're you're 100 percent correct. Me, you know, uh, I ran that. I ran Brian's bill in the House. He got it passed through the Senate uh, last year, and, and actually his his opponent up there for that Senate seat uh, was the chairman was opposed to it. And they kept saying, "We don't see it. We don't see a reason. We don't see a reason why we need this. We don't see a need. This is, you know, this is overreach. This is far fetching. Uh, all this kind of stuff." And then, man, look, look, look at what's happened. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, you, you know, it, it's these guys are. We've said it before. It's the Medicaid mafia. Uh, you got a bunch of them that have figured out how to uh, how to make a how to make a killing off of uh medicaid dollars uh they're they're doing it they've been doing it for years i think uh you know it's maybe gotten a little bit more difficult uh to do it without uh, without getting caught now which is which is a good thing uh, but you know there's there's all this uh i mean uh, you know the the paper's been full of the headlines with uh former senator woods and all this other stuff with that college up there and uh you know that is what it is. I know. Uh, I know. I know. Brian, um, Senator King. Uh, you haven't seen. I mean, you haven't seen any of his stuff even be questionable. And furthermore, had had his bill gotten passed, uh, we would be we would be catching a lot more of this stuff, and uh, either catching it or it would be stopping because they know uh, that they would be caught. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But again. You know, we can't get that out of committee because, uh, well. Because I mean, I, I remember the committee audio. Uh, there was some outlandish, there was some really, uh, there was a lot of squirmy legislators. I mean, you had, uh, I believe it was, uh, I think it was State Representative Michelle Gray, who's a huge fan of Conduit News, by the way, huge fan. And she said, uh, right. she said that it was, it was, it was too broad, that the Medicaid disclosure bill was too broad. And then her argument changed. And she said, it's not broad enough. Uh, I, and I was just like, well, that's weird. Do you remember that being too broad, but then not broad I, enough? It was, it was, it was too broad yet too narrow. Or yeah, uh, something like that. Basically, we just need to vote, vote, vote against it. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. I, I do, I, I do remember that. It was too broad. To, well, that, that's not broad enough. Uh, so anyway, I mean, you, you know, when 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 you've got when you've got legislators that are that that are sitting there that are looking at that and they're saying, you know, we, we don't need to, we, we don't need to support this. We don't need to, uh, we don't need to be finding out who's got a uh, conflict of interest or, or anything like that. Uh, you know, I don't know what you say about them. Hmm. Uh, I know, I know it makes it difficult to work with. That's all I say. Yeah. Well, I certainly appreciate uh, – it's always good to talk to you, Josh, and, you know, you always just kind of tell it like it is, and uh, that is what is so refreshing right now. We were just talking about how, you know, the difference between uh, politicians of old and politicians of today, and I, I think people just want you to, you know, shoot them straight, and I think more and more people are getting a, a better, uh, uh, I don't know, a radar detector when you're when you're not being real with them. And uh, that's uh, certainly good, I think, for our uh, our republic. So, Josh Miller – I appreciate it, sir. Uh, Good luck to you, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks a lot, Paul. I appreciate what you do and conduit, and uh, God bless you. Everybody go vote. Vote right. All right. Thank you, State Representative Josh Miller, everybody. Here he said, uh, he said, you know, please get out there. Josh Miller saying, please get out there and vote for Jan Morgan. And if you live in District 5, vote for Senator Brian King. And uh, I would go a step further. You've got uh, other primaries as well. You've got uh, you got Linda Collins Smith being challenged by another governor's water boy, James Sturch. Go-